How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Iron King Inc. YouTube channel. It's been a few weeks, but I'm back at the shop and I've got a fun one for you today. So I just picked this machine up from a local auction. It's a 1987 Caterpillar IT-12. I saw it over there, it was in the dead row, which means it uh, didn't run, didn't operate for some reason. It does run, I put a battery in it, um, not very well, so there's some issues that we gotta fix. But all, like all in all, it seems like it's in okay shape for the age. It's got a pretty nasty oil leak that we're gonna have to check out. This is what I really liked about this machine. It's got a set of forks, but I believe it rotates. So I think there's a little motor. I think this little box right here, it, the, these forks, if you go to lift, it goes and it rotates back and forth, which is pretty cool. So we'll have to check that out to see if it works. Here's the cab, bird nest. I'm not sure if it showed the hours on this thing. Well, it had 10,000 hours 50 years ago, so I would say it's got way more than that. This is like the battery connect. The throttle is a different story. It's just a governor now, so it you just kind of set it to where you want to go. So we'll have to check that out, find out what's wrong with it. Well, let's see if this thing fires up. It's been sitting for... I don't know, a week? And it's probably 20 degrees outside. Let's see if we can get this thing fired up. Okay, key on. This is the start. I did check the oil before I started this video, so it's all good. Let's see if we can get this thing fired up. A little less throttle. It's kind of a pain in the butt because you don't know how much, like what the idle is. Okay, there it clicked. Okay, we're on now. That should be on. We'll have to get that fixed. Come on, baby. Lot of throttle. There she goes. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna have to fix that problem. Got any working gauges? The oil pressure works, so that's good. Did it lift? Yep. Sweet. Well, that's pretty good. It's been sitting for a little bit and it fired up without ether. major major issue and that big giant oil leak and I think I've actually found the culprit of it and it might not be what you think it is so first things first let's go ahead and get this machine move over to the wash bay get it cleaned up bring it back over to the shop and we'll take a closer look at what we need to do to fix that uh, throttle and fix that giant oil leak on this thing
that right there, that is no good. But I think it's coming from something up here. Let's take a closer look. So that's, uh, yep, that's what I thought it was. So check this out, guys. It's the heater core. The lines right here are puking out of, there's a line back there that's broke or something. So we'll have to take that off. And I want to say 90% of this giant leak is antifreeze. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's get all this crud blown off this thing, get it over to the shop and we'll take a closer look at that problem over there. And we'll take a look at that throttle because that is scary to drive like that. When I was bringing it over here, I kept having to pop it out of gear and then pop it back in gear so that I didn't drive right through the wash bay. So that needs to be fixed badly. Well, I got a bottle of degreaser. Let's go ahead and hose this thing down in it because it is nasty. Pump it, pump it. Man, this thing is gross. Get this thing all washed up. Probably let this sit for 10 or 20 minutes. Yeah, I think definitely a majority of this leak is definitely coming right out of that heater box. That'll be really cool. And yeah, we'll hose this down too, why not? Look at that, they're turning yellow right before our eyes. I like this part too. That thing is just completely frozen into place. We'll have to check on that. All right. And that is a Cat 3204. Pretty rare engine actually. I get requests all the time for that little engine. might take more than one application. Oh man, this thing is gross. Cylinders aren't leaking, that's pretty surprising. Let's let this cook a little bit do its thing. Let's see if we can get this machine all cleaned up.
still gotta get up in there. We gotta get the other side. Engine's getting a lot cleaner, but a lot of the stuff is just so baked on that it's hard to get off, so. Still gotta get all this side. I really wish there was, oh, maybe this thing opens? Oh, it opened at one point. Yeah, not anymore though. Okay, well I'm gonna keep working on this. Probably another 25 minutes of pressure washing and we'll go ahead and get over to the shop. It's still far from clean, but at least it looks like it's good enough for us to attempt to work on it. I think it turned out okay-ish. At least from what it was, it's a million times better. Got all this crust removed. Most of it removed from the top of the engine. This was horrible up in here. Got all this cleaned. Cleaned the hoses as best I could. Cleaned up underneath. Got the cab sprayed out as best I could. This is all fly ash concrete. There's just no way to get it off without like a heavy acid. So let's go ahead, fire this thing up. I think we'll start with the leaking heater core and then we'll go over to the throttle. It's definitely gonna need a blow dry in here with the air compressor cause it is nasty. All right, here we go. Come on.
room. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna look underneath this first and see if we can get that. Well, let's start with the antifreeze situation. So I think our hose is gonna be right behind this door. It looks like four 916 bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this door off and see if we can get to that uh, leaking antifreeze hose behind here. All right, I had to get my impact all charged up. Good to go. Let's see what's behind door number one. see a loose hose clamp down there so that's not good but I'm assuming it's coming out of one of these over here it's gotta be oh yep I see it that all the way behind in there that second one is broke off at the heater core so that heater core is no good well, what we'll do, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna unclamp both of these. Just go ahead and loop it together. And we'll see about either replacing that heater core eventually or something along those lines. But I think what we'll do, I'm just gonna take this off, loop them together, close it back up, call it good. No more leaks. To cut this line in here, loop them together, and then see if we can find a replacement heater core so, I'm actually gonna try unscrew this one first. Okay. Get the zip tie. I wish I could get to that better. Thing is just so packed in there oh yeah it's completely broken off of the end that sucks well if I can just weasel a flathead in here for that and then easiest way for that one we'll just take this guy and just clip it right here loop them together done all right I'll tell you I think you can buy aftermarket heaters cheap enough I'll probably look on like Summit Racing or something and see if we can find a cheap like Mojave heater or some other insert that we can put in there. Cause I guarantee there's no way we're finding that original heater core. There's no way they still make it. Maybe they do. I'll give the cat dealer a call, see what they say. But in the meantime, that right there is gonna work perfect. Loop them together, no more leak. And that's all that matters right now. And I will go ahead and fix this at some point. But first, no more getting antifreeze everywhere. We'll go ahead, we'll check the radiator as well. Make sure, because I guarantee it's low. We'll fill that guy back up to where it's supposed to be and then be done with that. Cool, tuck that back in there, get this cover back on. And then we'll go focus on that throttle that's just stuck wide open. We'll see what the heck's going on with that thing. Onto the throttle. 
Well, so here's the major big issue with this thing is this throttle does not return. It is stuck wherever you set it. So I'm gonna go ahead, see if we can, oh, there we go, that opened up. Hey, that didn't get cleaned at all. That's nice. All right, let's see if we can see what's going on underneath here. I can move this forward. See if we can see that rod going back. Yeah. Man, I wonder if it all has to do with it, what's in here. Well, let's go ahead and we'll get some WD-40, some PB Blaster, and we'll start working this pedal back and forth, back and forth. Maybe we can get underneath here, start leaving up these joints. I could probably just pull this whole floor out too. Let's try that first. Lube that up. If that doesn't work, we'll start pulling this floor out of this thing and see if there's another issue going on underneath here. I have a feeling that it's more than that. But it's always worth a shot to try the easy thing first, right? Kind of hose it down. We're getting back and forth now. Pull the floor out of this thing. There's another one. Okay. Oh, is that all of them? The rest of them broken? There's their one hiding. That's all of them. Okay. Sneak that thing out of there. Yeah. Ooh. Nasty. Alright. Okie dokie. What do we got here? One, two, three, four. Maybe we'll get lucky. Got the floorboards out of it. It's deciding to snow and it's very cold. But let's try this again. See if we can lube up underneath here. Work this pedal back and forth. This is perfect time to go wash this thing too while the floorboards are out of it. Probably what it'll end up doing. It's not even getting any easier, it's kind of just the same. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's something behind this. I'll just keep working that thing back and forth. It seems to be getting a little bit easier. I'll check on the other hinges and see if maybe one of them's rusted up behind it, but 
I'll just be working this thing back and forth for probably 20, 30 minutes and we'll see where I get. All right, well, I've been working that thing back and forth for a little bit and it hasn't really wanted to go anywhere. It's kind of stayed the same. There's a uh, hinge right there where that throttle piece goes and then it goes that way and over to the pump. So, we'll lube that guy up too. And we'll work our way over. Yeah, I don't think it's the pump. Definitely not the pump. Maybe there's a hinge froze or something going on. Let's just see if we can keep working it. I think it's this pedal. I think this pedal's all jacked up and it's all frozen inside of here. But let's just keep working it. Okay, well I've been working it back and forth. That ain't working. New plan, we're gonna take this pedal assembly off and see if we can work it loose with a torch or just get it in the shop and find out what exactly is going on with this thing. So I'm gonna start pulling all four of these bolts out and then get this accelerator assembly out of the cab and we'll see what's going on with it. So that pedal is definitely the problem. Um, it's all loose from here and this mechanism right here is all seized up. I need to go ahead and get this cotter pin out. And once I do that, this whole assembly is gonna pop out of here. Then we'll get it on over to the bench, find out exactly why that thing's acting up like that. All right, finally was able to wrestle that cotter pin out. Now all we gotta do is push this pin out of here in a perfect world. Come on now. Oh. It's gonna require two hands. All right, so this is the pedal out of that little 912. It's all seized up where this shaft goes and I can force it back by hand, but it should be way easier than that. It should almost be loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll take our torch over there, heat these a little bit and start working it that way. And we'll see if we can work that penetrating oil under there and see if we can get this pedal working correctly again. Come on now. Yeah, not much heat, just enough to expand that. Start working her back and forth. Pain in the butt. <sighs> Come on now. Get it nice and hot. Much better. Sweet. Okay. That should seem to be working correctly now. I'm gonna keep working this guy. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put it back in the machine and see if our throttle <laughs> stops. Uh, we'll see if our governor turns into a throttle. How about that? Perfect. All right, well, long story short, that didn't work. Uh, pedal is fixed that was a problem so if you can see inside the cab here it's all unhooked i unhooked fuel pump it moves freely but this rod that goes back here it is frozen wherever you put it so i'm assuming one of these eyelets back here is froze up we got the torch out we're gonna heat those eyelets up see if we can work it back and forth kind of like what we did with the pedal and see if we can get this whole mechanism all unfrozen. All right, well, we got the torch lit up. This slowly heating up these eyelets in here in that shaft. Oh, 
hopefully it gets it warm enough that it can work that free if that is the problem on one. Close that guy down. Then we'll work ourselves to the other side. Started welding a little bit. I don't want to do that. Whoa! Flameage. Uh oh. <laughs> Starting to fire. Try and work that uh, shaft back and forth, see if we can get it loose. Okay. All right, well, we heated both sides several times, a bunch of PB blaster, and now self returns. So now let's hook up that throttle and see if uh, everything works the way it should. I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything back up. Come on. There it goes. That. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the cotter pin out of this just for now. I'm gonna hook the pedal up, make sure everything operates the way that it should. All right, did a quick little test fit for everything. And everything works. Self returns, no problem. Man, that was a pain in the butt. Yep, shuts off, on, and return. We'll just fire it up once just to make sure we're good to go. Out of gear. Let's see. Yep, out of gear. Well, all we got left is to put the floor pans back in it. I'm gonna start looking for a heater and just kind of put everything back together to where it was at before. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up right here. If you guys like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Give the video a like. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll tell you what, guys. What do you think I should do with this machine? Should I keep it for around the shop? Should I sell it? Should I gift it away? Let me know. Throw it down in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.